It is 1964. The West German Bundesbahn just received five brand new and state-of-the-art diesel locomotives to replace steam on the remaining few narrow-gauge lines. But not with the intention to save them from closure. Because that was already a decided matter. When the first of them, V52901, arrived on the mosbach mudau line, the so-called Odenwald Express, it found a branch line like most post-war branch lines. The rolling stock was ancient, the operating costs outrageous and the income little. But while the increasing number of cars and buses to drew the line its much needed passengers was good traffic, still in high demand. The rural roads were narrow and rough, for contemporary trucks are challenge in summer and a death trap in winter. Transport on the road was therefore quite a lot more expensive than on rails. But the incompatibility of the narrow gauge line with the standard gauge imposed its own challenges. Rolling stock couldn't be freely interchanged, special carriers for standard gauge wagons were used instead, and standard gauge low loaders when the locomotives needed to be transported away for an overhaul or repair. The Deutsche Bundesbahn had long made the decision to close, with one exception, all of the remaining narrow gauge lines. As soon as possible. But the condition of the roads needed to drastically improve first. Which created quite a paradox situation. While it seemed unreasonable to majorly invest in lines destined for closure, could they simply not be left in their current condition? The employed steam locomotives were long past their expected service life, running and maintaining them was unreasonably expensive. And to make matters even more urgent, in 1962 came the ban of wooden passenger wagons, inherently dangerous in crashes, finally into effect, with the line's special exemption, due to its low speed, running out soon. The Bundesbahn had to act, and ultimately ordered five new locomotives. Two meter gauge locomotives V52 for the Odenwald Express, partially paid for by public funds, and three 750 mm gauge locomotives of the same basic design as V51 for the remaining mostly goods only lines, paid for out of their own pockets. And for the Odenwald Express followed in 1965, also five so called refurbished passenger wagons from the Bundesbahn's own works. And they do look very similar to the standard gauge Umbauwagen, which were actually rebuilt from wooden designs. The narrow gauge ones, however, were from the ground up new and thoroughly modern builds, while still featuring open platforms. Already 1961 received the 750mm Bottobartalbahn a similar coach, but with closed platforms. The axles of the V51 and 52 locomotives are driven via transmission shafts rather than rods, which at that time was a novum for a locomotive of that size. More unusual for a locomotive of a public railway, however, is the motor setup. Rather than one large, other equipped with two small motors, which give away the design's origin. The locomotives are directly derived from an industrial design by MAK. Maschinenbau Kiel. The drive shaft powered boogies allow for extremely tight curves, and the two motors for economic operation, as both can be operated on their own for either light loads or if the other one fails. MLK's concept intended for the owner to always have a fully serviced spare motor at hand, so a failed one could quickly be exchanged, keeping a locomotive's downtime at a minimum. Nonetheless, proved this locomotive design to not be particularly popular. At that time, industrial operators much preferred the conventional drive via jack shaft and rods, a proven design that's easy to repair for mechanics used to steam locomotives. So MIK would only ever build one of them. Because the five for the Bundesbahn weren't built by them either, but instead by Gminder and license. The public funds used for the 2 meter gauge locomotives meant they had to be built locally. And of all the local manufacturers made Gminder in Moosbach the best offer. They also made the only offer, as there was no other local locomotive manufacturer left. 
but despite not being a commercial success and despite being designed for industrial use, proved the five machines extraordinarily reliable in public service and together with the new coaches improved ride comfort immensely while also slightly raising the top speed from 30 to 40 km per hour. But while only allowed 40 km per hour, claims one of the drivers that they can easily reach 70. I do wonder how he found that out. But all that was more a side effect than the intention. You see, the two locomotives for the Odenwald Express were the bare minimum for operating passenger trains. One always had to stay behind as backup, so the timetable shrunk down to only a single service in each direction per day. Not particularly attractive to passengers, is it? And when the end for the Odenwald Express finally came, it came rather rapidly. One of its bridges crossed the main line. And when in 1973 said main line was about to be electrified, that bridge was very much in the way of the required overhead wires. Raising the bridge would have been quite expensive, therefore the perfect reason to finally close the line for good. With both locomotives being withdrawn the same year. The 750mm gauge machines were, at least partially, a little luckier. The first of the three lines, the Botwa-Talbahn, was already closed in 1968. The second one, the Federseebahn, in 1969, with its remaining industrial spur being rebuilt to standard gauge in the following year. But due to the same gauge, could the V51 locomotive simply be passed on? After they were ordered to help dismantle their former home, of course. So it wasn't until 1971 the Bundesbahn withdrew the first of them, with the other two lasting until 1983, when also the Oechsle was closed down, leaving the Wangaoge Island Railway as the Bundesbahn's final narrow gauge line. Where, by the way, also the five coaches were sent after the Odenwald Express's closure. But as you have probably already guessed, also the locomotives, each less than 10 and 20 years old when withdrawn, were not scrapped. They found new lives elsewhere and, including the industrial prototype, all six still exist today. The three V51s are all back in Germany with one of them, V51901, being operational in regular service for the Rügenge Bäderbahn. Both V52s are busy in Italy and the prototype, after many years at the Swiss RHB, found its way back to the Boltalbahn. As if they wanted to teach us a lesson. These charming little diesels have become icons for finding the purpose far of their original intention. Twice. And became the face of Germany's final chapter of narrow gauge. One which is not about to close anytime soon. The making of these videos is partially funded by my awesome channel members, including Contrian, Dave Heise, Flip Schwib, Kay Frankly, Lukas Ilskens, Martin Wigikan, Sören Dominik Krug, and Steamy Player. Thank you. And now to a branchline hero of a completely different kind. Enjoy!